Now then, my name is Ryan Central and today I have a lot of new information coming out of Gearbox yet again, much like the last couple of videos. I had Chris Brock, who's one of the lead producers on Borderlands, jump onto my stream, twitch.tv forward slash Ryan Central by the way, whilst I was at Gamescom, and he answered a lot of questions about Endgame, what's still to come, what they're going to announce at PAX. So we'll start with that. What are they going to announce at PAX? But the next uh, thing is going to be... The next thing's PAX. PAX. And... Uh, is that where we found out the rest, or is there still stuff beyond? PAX? That's where you. I think that's where we you find out uh, end game, more end game, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of the first like thirty to ninety days of post launch stuff. Ah, okay. um, past that, I think the next thing's Paris Games Week, uh, in or Tokyo Game Show, maybe. Uh, I don't know. There's one of these things every month at this point, yeah, so yeah, I mean yeah. it won't be too long. So but they'll be post launch of. I think it's packs before the launch of the game, and then everything's after September the thirteenth. It sounds like it's going to be like lots of choices for whatever people want to do. Proving Grounds, if you want to just blast through content. Circle of Slot, if you just want to keep see how far you can get. And normal playthroughs, like you would in any previous Borderlands games. Yeah, yeah like, like we were kind of talking about earlier. I, I, there's a lot of different kinds of endgame for a lot of different kinds of people. And this is the one we're talking about today. But there will be more to come. Yeah. Um, one thing that I did notice in terms of wording was the word seasons and as somebody that we spoke a bit about Diablo last time that we were here but like was that are we going to see something like seasons in Borderlands 3 or was that just the terminology that you used for the VIP program specifically it's, it's kind of just terminology that we're still, we're still working out honestly like I actually specifically don't want to call them seasons because that has like a lot that means something it's a whole different yeah, yeah, yeah exactly like it has some baggage that goes with it and I, I, uh, we're still kind of working on the naming conventions for that stuff. Okay. So we have some other stuff that we, uh, that called, we we're calling seasons internally that, uh, we're going to announce pretty soon. Actually. Oh, I you see. Yeah. But that's not like a typical, like a Diablo season or a no. Fortnite season kind yeah. of thing. So we definitely have a lot of end game stuff we're doing, but we want to kind of roll it out kind of a little bit at a time. Got to save something for packs, you know? Oh yeah. So. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to go through lots of answers of different questions, but I also wanted to include a quickfire section. I actually spoke to Chris earlier in the day in another interview, but the audio was corrupted, so I got to miss a lot of that. But I'll answer all of the questions that we went over very quickly. Before that though, I did want to mention the areas that they're not ready to talk about just yet. Stuff like raid bosses they didn't want to talk about. Guardian ranks, they don't have much else to share other than this. Basically how they described it is what you can say so far. I can't say much. I can say it's an evolution of badass rank. Um, and that's about as far as I can get into it right now. Is that another PAX thing? Um, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Uh, uh, will Flax pets inherit his skins too? Yes. Oh, that's cool. And also other forms of endgame. I was a bit too scared to ask about mayhem mode, but if it's actually a thing, it's going to be packs where we hear about it. But just to quickly answer some questions on the proving grounds, there's no loot pools, according to Chris Brock, there's no specific loot tied to the proving grounds or any of the maps. And each of the proving grounds will have set bosses, like we see in the gameplay, and also a general sense of the monsters that will spawn. For example, in the gameplay that you've seen on screen, there were a lot of spider ants. That's going to be the case. You're not going to have Jabba spawning or robots, but you're more likely to see them in other specific proving grounds. So in terms of replayability, you don't have too much different. There's no cooldown on doing a proving ground, you can just keep spamming the same one over and over. It's still viable to play solo, but there is a reason of maybe doing it in a group. It means that you have a bit more control of what finding specific guns that you might want, right? That you just have like 16 guns to sort of choose from. That's true, from and then you can trade them, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's true, actually, yeah, that's a good point. So uh, if you want, yeah, because it like really boosts your chances for a specific gun to drop. It's all working together. You can also like do stuff where you could probably run four flax in a group. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, to. absolutely. That's it's pretty hectic, but yeah, you can do it. I, c I just can't imagine what that'd look like. Oh, just four Moses with Iron Mechs, all of them getting out. There's just eight <laughs> characters running around shooting. It's funny. Blowing everything that. up with like crit grenades and stuff. So. so it's funny you mentioned those two in particular because um, when we're in development, we have to like we say we have to plan for the worst case scenario, okay. right? We have to always plan for. Uh, this map needs to be big enough for four Iron Bears to fit, right? This, uh, we need to have enough uh, memory and performance, you know, available to us that we can handle four Iron Bears just like launching grenades at the ground. In case it wasn't obvious, these are not procedurally generated like Diablo Rifts are, and there's not really any incentive to do specific trials like dailies or 
bits and pieces like that. So there is a bit of a concern that the community will farm the most efficient proving ground and ignore the other five. That's kind of a concern, but Gearbox are aware that that could happen. One key thing that they did mention is that this isn't pure end game by any stretch. I guess if you were to compare this to another game like Destiny, it's like a strike or gambit in a sense where you can do it in endgame if you do enjoy it but you don't have to it's not the pinnacle content like gearbox said pax is probably where we find out more now that we've got those really key points out of the way i'm going to include all of the other questions that chris brock answered on the live stream but one of the biggest talking points i suppose is microtransactions how are they going to work in borderlands Jeez, is it possible to buy iridian with money like real money no i feel like monetization wise no yeah. no Basically the same as it was in previous games where yeah. you just buy DLC and Jeez, everyone's yeah. <laughs> just the same, yeah. Yeah. I think it's funny, we were we were heading out to uh PAX East to announce the game and uh our the Mask of Mayhem trailer uh came out mm -hmm. and uh you know, uh we knew it was Borderlands three, but we didn't say that until PAX, right? So people were speculating on what it was. And I was sitting there in the airport terminal ready to fly out looking at my phone on Reddit and uh, you know, people were like, "Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a going to be microtransaction filled, or it's a battle royale mm -hmm. game, or it's a mobile game." And it's like, "No, it's just Borderlands 3. It's like, it's like what you want. Like, you don't have to like keep like, uh, like flinching. Like, you know, it's just it's the thing we make." Yeah. So it sounds like that's a really like fulfilling feeling of just having a sense of this is exactly what you want, almost. Where it's kind of people want. I, I was smiling to myself, uh, and I turned to my team because like, a bunch of us went out there, and it's, yeah, I'm like, we're making what they want. I don't believe it yet, but we're making what they want. How long after launch did we get crossplay? I imagine is that something we know about yet. No or comment. Two K thing. Okay. Is I it mean, it's something we're talking about with all the first parties. Yeah. I mean, like we're we are a great game for it. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that, and it's something we're looking into. I guess this is a comment. It's something we're looking into, uh, but nothing to announce at this time. I, the one thing I was going to ask is, when you're like level 50 and you're trying stuff out, you might be getting some gear, what do you think influences a build the most? Like if you get an artifact and you go, you want to sort of build around that, what would be the first thing to start with? Because you, obviously you can respect whenever you want, really. Mm -hmm. So you can be quite flexible with your talent. So what do you think influences like a killer build at end game? Would it be Oof. a gun? Would it be an artifact? What sort of springs to mind there? Ooh, that's a good question. I mean, you could build around whatever you wanted, I guess. Uh, I tend to build around... Uh, not just one gun, but kind of like several guns. You can also it's something I've done before is also build around your class mod. Like if you find a if you find a particularly good class mod, I'll go respec around that and just use those extra points for something else. And could you, you say you have a really good weapon? Say you have a really good artifact for this build, and your talents are set up, but you want like a class mod, or you know you have a class mod and artifact, you want a really good weapon. Is there any way to like focus for any particular kind of gear? Or are you just sort of leaving it up to? It's we're kind of leaving it up to. So I mean, like, there's certain specific enemies have specific things they drop, like a loot table. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, outside of that, you're kind of up to the mercy of RNG. So. And you can get the same gear that in proving grounds as you would in Circle of Slaughter. Like, it's not. You can only get this certain thing from proving grounds. You can only get this certain thing from. Or is there an element of that? So I, I would so. I want to say no. I want to say that like there's not anything particularly specific about proving grounds, and I know that's true of the chest. The chest at the end, I know mm -hmm. that's true. What I, what I unfortunately, un I would have to go ask somebody back at the office is uh, if the bosses have specific loot tables in proving grounds. Okay, yeah. uh, it, we tend to have specific loot tables on bosses. I just don't know if we do for those. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. So, so we have like a challenge here, which is one of the six proving grounds. All of the gear that drops from here will probably drop from the other five. It's not like. Only certain stuff could drop from the build that we're playing. If we go and do another proving grounds, we'll get different gear. It's kind of the same. Yeah, I believe that's true. There are anointed guns in the proving grounds. Mm -hmm. For those that don't really know the system, how do anointed gear work? And how does it work in mm. comparison to the proving grounds? Uh, yeah, so, well, at high enough levels, anointed gear has a chance to drop. And anointed gear... So think of it as kind of a, an addendum to rarity. Like So, like... Uh, if you have an anointed purple, it will have an extra part that like rolls on it that will give it an extra attribute. So okay. it's kind of like a like legendary plus plus. It's like a warforged, similar sort of thing for like World of Warcraft. Uh, you know what? Not the I don't I don't oh, have okay. a big frame of reference. It's like well. it's like I haven't played since Burning Crusade, so it's yeah, been a while. Yeah. yeah, it's like an RNG thing where you just have a chance of getting that gear, but made a little bit stronger. Yes. What kind of it's extra kind of like perks that, yes. do you have? Is it like to do with talents or? Um. So it's it's honestly it's mostly kind of like uh like legendary stuff like red text kind of stuff. Oh, like okay. it gives you like a whole different like attribute. Like it gives you like some pretty busted stuff, honestly. 
And that's this is a good way to get for it. This is a good way to get it? Yep. Is it gonna be keyboard and mouse support for console? No, unfortunately not. We talk more about artifacts. Are there any real difference between them and Borderlands 2? Um, we've kind of moved them more into like uh, things that kind of actually sort of change the character. Like my favorite artifact is one that uh, makes you slide twice as fast and shoots buzz saws out from your feet. Okay. So it's it's just kind of fun because you end up just kind of sliding all over the place and it's a lot of it's a good time. There's uh, ones that uh, do move speed uh, buffs. There's ones that have uh, you know like just pump up your ground pound. So like it's we tend to try to do like less like plus stats and more like functional changes. Mm -hmm. So what was the hardest thing to sort of do for BL3? Cuz I heard like Flax AI pets was uh, oh yeah, that was that rumor was way overblown because I so actually going into development, I was like, "Ooh, Flax, we're going to have pets and that's really hard with pet AI and you know, AI, it's okay if your AI is a little a little rough for stuff that you're trying to fight. As soon as you're relying on AI, you expect it to be very good, mm -hmm. right? And I was nervous about it, but honestly, the AI for Flak was not much of a problem. It was not uh, not nearly as hard as I thought. Iron Bear, honestly, was was uh, was a really big pain in the ass. It was. Uh, <laughs> you have to kind of make two I, characters, right, from a dev perspective, or you have the two. Well, an Iron Bear is is very intricate. Like a lot of the times, that like hard surface kind of like uh, tech stuff mm -hmm. is harder to model and. Uh, you know, I, I, it took 11 months to, to fully build Iron Bear. I joked uh, to the team, joked that I could, uh, you know, you know, I could make a person, mm -hmm. like an actual human being, in nine months, okay. right? Yeah, so yeah. But, yeah, it took 11 months to make Iron Bear? Come on, this seems crazy. Uh, a lot of people saying that it looked like the pets don't do a lot of damage, but I guess that's because you don't really spec into that unless you go full Master Tree. Yeah. They're just sort of designed to be a little bit of help that you can get. But yeah, they scale along with your level, but, you know, whereas you can like min max a character all day long you're you have to it's like a specific like you said it's like a specific tree for flak double nukes Why on iron bear deal more damage than what we've actually seen i guess maybe, you maybe they should thankfully we can we could we have what's called micro patching where we basically without having to go through an actual content patch we can like just get into the game and adjust uh, some data values and it so could be stuff like patch notes, like post launch, when you. Because yes. yeah, 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 yeah. That's stuff. actually like a crusade of mine. Like I hate when games come out and they don't tell you what they did. Yeah, so no, that's that's a big deal. Yeah. And I guess that's something that you'll be looking at post launch. Just like any game that has any form of balancing, where it's just like. Yeah, if it's bad, we'll change it. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, if it's something that's not good enough, we'll we'll make the change. Will it be leaderboards for proving grounds? Uh, no, no. Uh, unfortunately. I say, so this is my producer's, my, I'm a producer, so that's gonna come out here. Um, leaderboards are awesome, I wish we had them. Also, leaderboards are a huge pain in the ass and we don't have them. <laughs> so we're not gonna do that right now. When you have like a Mara Flak and you have like the different versions of pets and stuff, uh, obviously the more that you go down one of these, the more augments you unlock and no doubt the further you go down, the stronger those augments are, like mm -hmm. pet variations or whatever. Like, how would you recommend would you recommend still trying to sort of go for the bottom talent for some people or at least past the point and then start going in or yeah so i think so i think something that you'll see here is like there's a, a mid a mid level yeah. uh pretty big deal so like like there's a big deal skill right uh if you want to go all the way down the tree to get that skill at the end it's definitely worthwhile mm -hmm. if you want to cross class it's okay to only go halfway down the tree because that's still meaningful like mm -hmm. there's not there's not really any character that just doesn't work until you get to the end of the tree. You put skins on on the Iron Bear. The Iron Bear inherits your skin. So if you are Moe's and you change into a skin, Iron Bear will also have a skin like that. Stuff, but in yeah. terms of guns that might surprise you with how fun or effective they are, what kind of springs to mind? Uh, Torgs. Torgs are really good. Uh, if you can find... Uh, there's Torg Assault Rifles uh, where you switch over to uh, Sticky Mode and then on Reload all of the explosions go off at once. Uh, and like Moe's in particular has, has trees that make that very, very powerful. Okay. Uh, but it, just in general, it's really powerful. I've, especially as somebody, no doubt you've watched a lot of like the fairy crafting guides. I've watched some, yeah. Are there any that sort of maybe caught your eye and went like, you had to sort of go and try it yourself once you saw that video and like Ooh. how it synergized? It, with Zane or anybody else? So, so yeah, so not specifically for Zane, uh, but I was watching, oh, was it Baru? I might have been Baru. Uh, had a good, a good flak build, like a really, really, really awesome crit build for mm -hmm. flak that uh, 
I'm pretty excited to try out myself, honestly. That's, uh, I'm trying to decide at launch if I'm going to be rolling Flak or Amara. I don't know yet. Um, we got to do like a Twitter poll like everybody else. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I have Randy does the Twitter polls all the time. Maybe I'll do that. Speaking of like Vault Hunters that fit into those archetypes that go, that doesn't make any sense, but it actually does. So all of the marketing has had Flak with the sniper rifle, but Flak can also really pull off a shotgun build. There's a really good shotgun build for Flak. Um, Moe's is interesting because Moe's... Like, it, also, it is all ways about Iron Bear, but uh, she also has a lot of stuff like increase her grenade capacity. and uh, Or the one, there's a tree where she basically, so I was talking with our QA guys, mm -hmm. and he was we were doing a stream on Proving Grounds just a second ago. And he said, hey, I almost uh, gave you this gun, because if you take this, uh, I can't remember which weapon it was, a COV uh, sniper. Mm -hmm. If you take this one, and you take that tree, you won't have to reload the entire map. Because like she just regenerates ammo at such an entire really? clip that like you don't ever actually have to get an iron bear. Yeah. yeah, you don't overheat. You know, just you're good to go all the time. So, thing. Uh, there's got to be stuff that you just kind of like, especially with talents, right? That I noticed like I think it's Phalanx Doctrine for Moes, where it's like there are no. St it's just something that increases your damage that doesn't have a max stack. It just keeps going and going and going. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to, like, if you can off the top of your head, are there any, like, talents that you look at with Zane or Amar, well, any of them that you go, like, this one in Zane's tree, for example, you always want to get it if you're going this high, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Are there any specific talents that you're like, you will always want to get this no matter what you're doing? On Zane's, so honestly, I have to be honest with me, and Zane's probably the character I played the least, okay. if I'm perfectly honest with you. Uh, mm. So with Moe's, I, I, if you can't tell, I play a lot of Moe's. Uh, with Moe's in particular, she's got one where uh, you can throw grenades and fight for your life, mm -hmm. right? Which is, that's pretty big, uh, especially with her, because she can do so much damage with a grenade. Then, uh, I don't know, let's see here. Flak has one where uh, your pet can go out and revive your team. Uh, that's pretty handy, because uh, like, I don't want to go over there. Sometimes, like, sometimes I'm fighting, my buddy's fighting, I don't want to go over there and revive him. Uh, pet can do it for me. And they are all of the questions that I got to ask Chris Brock. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned a thing or two. If you did enjoy the video, do like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I am a small channel and all of that. So thanks again. Take care. See you soon.